Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is Phil Place TCG here, and today, because you know what? It's been a while, and I want to make a fun tier list video. Uh, we're going to, of course, talk about the uh, tier list for the OP05 meta. It has been oh, about a month or so. More than that, probably. I can't honestly remember when this set even came out. Um, and a lot of stuff has been... Well, there hasn't been a whole lot of huge events for OP05, but there have been a lot of smaller, event, uh, smaller events hosted by the Eggman um, and some other... Uh, groups that have been hosting these big tournaments so before we are you know as we are on our way to the uh, one piece nationals i think later this month it's i feel like this is good a time as ever to just create a tier list video based uh, based off all the information we've seen what leaders are performing and what leaders are not performing once again this is going to be just my personal opinion of what i've seen uh taking into account the locals that i've been to uh, the online tournament presence my own experiences playing these decks so let's get into it uh, first and foremost thank you so much for all the recent support of uh, the, the videos going over dragon ball fusion gameplay and some other uh topics i really do appreciate that we are doing fantastic on our way to 700 subs so if you haven't already hit that like button especially if you like one piece dragon ball content you're in the right place so with that all out of the way let's talk about the uh, tier list here so my list i like to be funny um top of this we have the yonko uh, basically the top the best of the best these are the decks for the meta um basically the ones that are you're always going to see in the top 16 top eight uh no doubt in my mind these decks are the ones most likely to win any big event uh, then we have on the edge of greatness decks that are so close to being uh, top tier but are just held back by maybe a deck or two or just certain uh certain card editions in the meta that have rendered their decks or their archetypes a lot harder to uh, work with. Then we have Rogue. Of course, Rogue is just decks that are really, really good into decks that are either in the Yonko status or on the Edge of Greatness, but they just don't do well majority of decks. Uh, but these are ones that you should respect, and uh, if you don't, bad things might happen. And then we have Locals for fun. Uh, basically, this is a deck you can bring to Locals just to have some fun and you know just just see what happens these could even be considered like low rogue tier but decks that aren't just going to see any significant uh any significant presence in you know the top t uh, top rankings of big tournaments and of course we have why why are you playing this leader there are so many better leaders to play and uh yeah that's basically it so let's start um we'll start you know with the first one up here and that is Blue Doflamingo. I love this deck so much. It's the first major deck I put so much time and effort into. I will always have a fond memory of Dofi. He has, unfortunately, because he is so archetype-focused, he hasn't been able to do as well as he used to. But I will throw him in the Rogue tier because he, in certain matchups, he is really, really good. Because the ability to swing 7k while playing a 4 cost body that your opponent has to get rid of. Um, or they're going to have something, some more bodies to deal with. Uh, the Recursion with the Gecko Moria. Uh, Mihawk. Uh, the Mihawk 9 drop is still a fantastic card. There are some really cool tech cards you can throw in Doflamingo. But honestly, right now, he is just not is he's not sitting as high as he used to. But with the new addition of the Seven Warlord support that we're supposedly getting in the expansion booster, or set six, I can't remember which one it is, uh, he could see more play. As long as it is blue, uh, Seven Warlords, which I think we got one, which was an Edward Weevil card, which could be good sign of something, uh, a sign of something good for this archetype. Uh, but for now, I think he's set in Rogue. Ugh, blue Purple Kaido. I love this deck so much. And the deck can be really good i'm just gonna throw him in rogue as well that might change by the end of this video though blue he has some really great options we've gotten great uh, new additions of uh, ramp cards like the three drop uh, zojiro and uh, a lot of people have actually been going away from onigashima island uh, because it can clog up the deck a bit but 
if you can pop off with on your curve and you're ramping, oh man, this deck can do some scary things. Uh, so that's why he is going to be in the rogue tier. Just ammo pirates keep getting a lot of really cool things. Uh, blue purple croc. I'm gonna throw him in rogue also. You gotta respect any deck that has yellow in it. You have to respect. The uh, with purple being able to manipulate Dawn and uh, yellow being able to uh, do some really cool things with triggers and build a decent board. I think blue, purple, sorry, purple and yellow is a really good combination. It hasn't been putting up a lot of great numbers, but against certain matchups, this leader is scary. You know, purple and yellow is a scary combination. Uh, next, we have Isho. Uh, black, green, sadly, hasn't been doing so well. I'm just going to throw it into locals for fun. Uh, there might be some neat builds with it, but nothing that you're going to see do anything significant. Oh, I just realized that it's messing with my uh, screen here. I'm going to have to adjust this. There we go. Okay. Uh, next, we have Red Purple Law. We're going to throw Red Purple Law up into uh, Edge of Greatness. Not red purple. Red green law. Doi. Red green law. Car the deck is still ridiculous into almost every color right now that is not uh, Sakazuki. Sakazuki just obliterates this deck. But being able to swing multiple five, like being able to build a wide board, swing 5k, 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 even some cards being able to swing twice is still very gross and very scary. Uh, it still goes well into a lot of decks. It's just right now with the big three. The big three kind of just, well, I'd say, I'd say Anel and Sakazuki uh, really scared this guy. So, but Red Green Law, for the fact that it's still around for this long, without any support, is fantastic. It, it's just, it's a great leader. Um, Kazuki Odin, throw that down into locals for fun. I've seen some really interesting deck builds with this leader, but unfortunately, they just... Uh, they're just they're not there it's a fun leader uh the new odin leader seems kind of neat but we'll have to see how that works but for now he's just a locals deck um same thing with blurple croc because once again baroque work it, it, it blue and purple has some really neat co uh, combinations there's a lot of really cool baroque work cards but just not enough to work well with this particular leader so i think yeah it's just good for locals now i know they're getting more baroque work support in the future which could change this obviously but for now he's gonna be sitting at locals same thing with king he's just purple good stuff dot deck his ability is really odd though it kind of goes against what purple does but it still finds ways to get in the top so it's gonna stay there um well, so it still does well enough to be at locals, but not nothing really any not in any big tournament anymore. Whitebeard absolutely is going to go into Edge of Greatness. I even would say this deck could possibly be in the Yonko status. The problem is a lot of decks have found ways to beat Whitebeard, but Whitebeard is still holding its own with building more of a rush build. It, just a 6k leader is always going to be tough. It's always going to be difficult to deal with. So I think that he is got to respect the white beard, but um, he should be up here near the top. Um, Garp, I just Ugh, Garp is such a. I want this leader to be good, but black and red is just not a great combination. The best you can do with this deck is you can do rush like red aggressive cards like with rush. For the red and then defensive cards for black uh which there are a lot of black blockers that can't be ko'd so that's actually an okay strategy but overall he's just not he's just not there um i should also mention that i'm just gonna besides like i know i putting white beard up top there i might put some of these you know in a particular order but if i throw it into a category and just leave it there it's not saying that that's like the worst leader of that particular category it's just i'm throwing it in as just a lump this is what it's in uh kinemon kinemon just locals for fun didn't get bad it didn't get it didn't get any sorry green kinemon did not get bad he just not did not get any better and unfortunately with a lot of decks that are just doing way better uh katakuri not katakuri uh, sorry uh sakazuki you know just green is just in a rough spot I still think it's fun for locals, but that's really about it. 
Uh, Sanji. Sanji. Oh, God. You know, Sanji's a tough one. I think the whole skillless package strategy is really good, but it hasn't really gotten any new, like, real support. Um, especially with, you know, no, I'm going to throw uh, Sanji. No, I'm going to throw him into locals. Just going to throw him right there. Um, he hasn't gotten really any new support, but still, he's really good. Uh, at the Like, he can pop off, but that's about it, just for fun. Ivankov, same thing. I've played against a blue player who mained Ivankov since set two, and the things he could do with that deck to this day are still scary. But it's not a competitive deck. It's just going to be more of a for fun deck. Now, maybe the new Impel Down stuff could make it better. We'll have to find out. Magellan. Magellan is still pretty good. Its ability is just... I think it's a solid... Uh, purple deck now it's not the best purple deck it was for a little bit but with purple uh, luffy out no nah, it's just not it anymore uh zeph he is i've heard good things about zeph i just haven't seen a zeph player in so long but i've seen people talking about how zeph could be really good so what uh, you know i'll give leave it to them I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt put them in fun uh locals for fun um, we have Smoker. I'll throw Smoker into Rogue. Smoker is a respectable black leader still. He can do some really interesting things. His ability just doesn't pop off as well as it used to, but into certain matchups, into low, into decks with low to the ground cost cards, it's still really, really good. And black as a color in general is just, it can, it's scary. It can, it can pop off and not just with, uh, Sakazuki, but with a lot of other decks. Ace. Same thing. I'm going to throw him in Rogue. Ace is... Now that Ace has all like the white beard uh, and the good red cards back, Ace is solid. Ace is scary because it relies more so on events than anything else. Uh, being able to drop uh, Flame Emperors, Fire Fists. Like, the, the leader is scary as hell. It can clear boards real quick. Uh, Kuro. Absolutely throwing Kuro into Rogue. If you have not seen uh, one of my previous videos I did this week, my buddy Jonah won our OPL5 locals with Kuro, and he is doing great with that leader right now. The leader is scary, and it hasn't gotten really any support since set three, but it's holding its own. You can check out some gameplay videos on the Iowa Grand Fleet. I'll have the link in the description. Uh, check out some of his gameplay videos. It's really cool. He beats Anel, Katakuri, Sakazuki. Like, it's it's good stuff. Um, Kuro can be scary, especially when you can when your leader can possibly swing three times a turn. It's, it's gross. Arlong. I think Arlong also is in the rogue tier because... Green and yellow have some great trigger cards, and this ability is very similar to the blue Doflamingo. It can pop off. You can build a very quick board, especially with like Charlotte Cracker, um, the Rush Katakuri. It, it's scary. And like I said, respect any deck that runs yellow. You have to. Nami. I'm going to throw Nami onto the edge of greatness. Uh, this deck is... If you know how to play Nami, you're just an incredibly talented and smart person, in my opinion. You essentially play the game with yourself. The deck doesn't do well into Rush, but right now Rush is kind of taking a little bit of a back seat. The only really Rush decks we have, I mean, we, there are still some Rush decks, but they're just not as they're not played as much right now because of things like uh, Sakazuki and NL that take care of low to the ground bodies. But in the right matchup, it's so difficult to, you know, beat Nami. I, I'm going to go on a limb and say Nami is still up there on the edge of greatness as one of the better decks uh, out there. But I'd say it's probably below tier, of the lowest tier of that. Iceberg. <laughs> I know there's a bunch of memes around Iceberg right now. Oh, man. But I've played against an Iceberg at the last regional I went to, and it's scary. I'm going to throw him down in Rogue just because I played... Um, I was playing Green Purple Dofi into it, and it scared me. Like, they can do some scary things. So I'm going to respect it, put it in Rogue tier. Um, Rob Lucci. 
I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw Rob and Den into locals. I think its ability is good, don't get me wrong, but it is I don't know, it just feels like it's a worse version of Sakazuki. I mean it feels like a lot of black decks are just worse versions of Sakazuki. But uh, I don't know. This may change. I still I just his ability is very good, very scary. Now, nah, you know, fuck it. I'll throw it in rogue tier. Big Mom. Uh, black, yellow, Big Mom is surprisingly good. Uh, like I said, black has amazing defensive cards. Yellow has great triggers. You have access to uh, the 10-drop Big Mom, which is terrifying. So com like, combine all that in a smart player, this leader pops off. Um, right now, we have our first in the Yonko category. Let me move this down a little bit. There we go. Uh, Yonk, uh, this <sighs> Katakuri is just an abs is absolute cancer. Um, you can't... Katakuri's whole spiel is he relies on triggers. You can't count... You can't uh, plan on triggers. You hope that you don't get any, but with the amount of support Yellow's gotten in the last three sets, like two sets on top of set three... Yellow has access to so many amazing triggers, you're almost guaranteed to always hit a trigger. So you have to respect it. And because Katakuri is a Big Mom's Pirate, he has access to the 10 drop. He has the insane ability to look at your opponent's life or your life to, to move cards around. Uh, he swings 7k for one Dawn, which is insane. You have to respect Katakuri. It's, it's a disgusting deck and it goes really well into, you know, what people would say is the best deck in the format. Uh, blue purple do flamingo. Oh, not blue purple, green purple do flamingo. I'm throwing it on the edge of greatness. I still think that this leader is fantastic, being able to restand to dawn at the end of turn. Now the big difference is most people are not running the film package anymore. They are now running the birdcage package, which birdcage dofi is kind of scary. And by kind of, I mean yes, it is. It is absolutely scary. It punishes low to the ground swingers, and it's just. It's it's got to be respected. I do think that it's not as good as it used to be, but this new version of the deck does help it compete in the meta. I'm gonna just move it above Nami though. Uda, throw down the Y. I'm sorry, the deck is just not there. Let's just move on. Um, Queen. Ah, <laughs> uh, Queen. Let's throw you in Rogue. Queen is in Rogue because. Trying to get this to not like be awful here. Uh, Queen is in here because Queen is just is is really good. Queen is just fantastic. It's not as good as Anel when it comes to sustainability, but a good Queen player is still dangerous. Rebecca, I don't know. I think Rebecca's got to go into locals for fun at this point. I haven't seen any good Rebecca decks in a long time. No one of my locals plays it except for one guy. He's new and he just plays it because he likes Rebecca. I just think that Rebecca is a worse version of Sakazuki in a lot of ways. It can do some cool things that Sakazuki can't, but I don't know. I'm just gonna say I, I'm not really seeing it. Uh, Red, purple, Luffy, same thing. Uh, I don't know why you play this leader. It's just, it's not nearly as good as any of the other red leaders. Having access to green really doesn't change that, so. Um, red Luffy, I'm gonna throw in Rogue because red needs to be respected. It has, a lot of people have been building a more rush, uh, rush like tall board approach to it. And rush into into some of the better decks in the some of the top tier decks in the format is very scary. So I'm just gonna throw Luffy into Rogue. Uh, kid, respect Kid. Uh, kid is degenerate as hell. Green, he is the best green leader I think at the moment, like pure green. Uh, being able to swing possibly 12k twice is game ending. 100%. Supernova engine is still very, very good. So you got to respect Kid. Croc. I'm going to throw Croc into Rogue tier as well. Croc, I tried playing a build of it, you know, 
I watched some videos on like the Heart Pirates, TCG, and some, I can't remember the other channel I watched it on, but uh, basically talked about how the Crocodile has an amazing curve, and he does, absolutely. The problem is, it's too slow. You're playing one card a turn that does one thing, and in a lot of decks right now, that's just not good enough. Uh, with Sakazuki and Anel being able to remove so many things so easily, uh, I mean, Croc has the ability to remove things too, but you have to see your perfect curve. But if you see your perfect curve, it's fantastic. If you don't, it's real, real sad. Um, I like Croc, I respect it, but I think it's just right now, blue, if you're gonna play blue, you have to play Sakazuki. Um, let's throw purple Kaido into Locals for Fun because, yeah, it's, a, it's just another way to play purple cards. The problem is, I think if you're gonna play Animal Pirates, you wanna play it in the, um, oh, excuse me, you want to play it in uh, Blue Purple Kaido because you have more access to the Blue Animal Pirates cards, Animal Kingdom Pirates, it's, but Purple has, I mean, that ability to essentially take away a life is really, really good. The problem is, it's just, in my opinion, it's too slow of a deck without the extra support of Blue's uh, extra searcher for Animal Kingdom. Gotta respect it, but it's just not, as good you know move this up a little bit there we go uh shanks unfortunately as much as i want to like this this is in the y category they haven't gotten any purple film cards in a long time so there's been really no support for this leader i wish he would have been a red purple leader because at that point he could have used the red and purple film cards but unfortunately until we get some more he's just kind of sitting in the y category it's sad one of my favorite characters just sitting so low uh he's gonna be joined by black <laughs> sakazuki this is not the card you want this is not the sakazuki you want to play absolutely not oh we're gonna throw uh yellow charlotte uh charlotte lin lin in here it's just it's another way to build the yellow uh big mom deck you this one's much more defensive more big brain compared to uh katakuri but unfortunately it's just i don't think it's as good it's much more uh, methodical, and I think a lot of people... It, it turns away a lot of people from playing it because of that. But I still think a good player needs to respect it. Um, Black Luffy. I'm going to throw Locals for fun. Um, unfortunately, he's just not... He's just not there. I'm going to have to make this a little smaller. There you go. He's just not there. Um... He was really good during, like, the Whitebeard heavy meta because he could become a 6k, which made it easier for him to swing in. But since then, he really hasn't been doing too much. So, I'm going to throw him down for fun, but I'm always open to be uh, surprised if he were to do something. Next, I'm going to throw Yellow Yamato into Rogue. Uh, Ye Yellow Yamato is just... I think it's a sleeper deck. The ability to become a 6k on defense, you take life a lot earlier because to help build up a, de to help build up a decent hand. And then you can be a 6k leader on defense, which makes your opponent have to rethink their strategy. They have to throw Dawn on their 5k's to attack. And then Yellow still, once again, amazing triggers. You have the 9-drop Yamato, you have the 8-drop Katakuri, just a lot of really good things in there, regardless if you can't use the 10-drop uh, Big Mom. But I still think it's a solid deck that has to be respected, but it is... Uh, it's just it's one of the least playable yellow decks out there. Uh, Vivi, oh man, I'm gonna throw Vivi into locals for fun because there are some goofy builds with this, like mostly involving the straw hats that you can use. The ability to draw essentially an extra card every turn and give something rush. You're essentially playing big bodies with rush and drawing an extra card. the The best way to play this is with the straw hat package, in my opinion. It was my like pet project deck just for fun, but that's about it. It probably could even go into the Y tier, but I still think some cards, it, it, some decks, it's really funny. Uh, was playing into some decks, people do not expect Vivi to be as good as she is. Zoro, I'm gonna throw into On the Edge of Greatness. Red Zoro is still good. Like its ability to give everything 1K plus is still good. It's just a red rush aggressive deck, though it does hurt going. It's it's kind of as a, in my opinion, it has a 50-50 match into Sakazuki, 
because Rush is scary to Sakazuki. You want to KO, with Sakazuki, you want to KO bodies before they can attack you. But with Rush, they're going to attack you. So even if they get, even if you get rid of them, they've done their job, you know? Um, Zoro is still scary. It can play, you know, Diablo Jambe, uh, five drop Rush Luffy that can't be blocked. It, it's just, a, I think it's a solid deck still. Um, gotta respect it. I know, I, like that. I think that's my catchphrase this video is gotta respect it. Sabo, I'm gonna throw into locals for fun. He seems neat. And I know people swear by this leader. It's just, I personally haven't seen a whole lot of uh, results with it. It did really, really well into one of our pre-releases though. Uh, we were, he, uh, the player was able to get a bunch of revolutionary army cards and it just worked out for him <laughs> um, to play this card, so. But I think it's for fun. Ella Betty, in my opinion, rogue. The deck either wins quick or loses quick. That's it. Uh, deck can pop off. I've seen in one of our locals, uh, one of our players swung in on turn three, 12K double strike or dual attack, double attack, whatever it is in one piece. Uh, it's scary. It has, a, it's yellow. It has access to great triggers. Re the red revolutionary armor cards are fantastic. It's awesome. Uh, I, I really do think the leader deserves to be respected in rogue tier. Uh, Rosinante, oh, it's a very defensive build, but I'm gonna throw it into rogue tier as well. Uh, it's a very defensive deck, but it has some access to some amazing cards. 10 drop green Dofi, uh, five drop secret rare Yamato. It just has a lot of really cool tech cards to it. And a methodical player can be successful with it. I don't see it winning any events, but like it can piss some people off. <laughs> All right, let's throw it in here. Sakazuki. Uh, Sakazuki is the undisputed best deck in format. Now, of course, it can lose. That's Sakazuki can absolutely easily lose to itself uh, through because the deck doesn't run a whole lot of defensive power, not a lot of counter power. So it can brick their hand can brick. Uh, if they don't see cards they need, they don't do their math correctly, it can brick, it can lose. But a talented Zakazuki player who sees their lines will win almost every time. The deck is fantastic. It does have a hard matchup into Katakuri and into Yellow in general, but I still think a talented player can do it. Purple Luffy. Uh, we're going to throw Purple Luffy on the edge of greatness. The deck can pop off. It's just, it's not as good as what a lot of people were thinking it was going to be. And it's still, it is the best purple leader by far, but it is just not as good as what people were thinking. You know, you, they play one big body per turn. You deal with that big body, you're kind of set. They have to take a life to ramp, which is still great to ramp, but... Mm. I don't know. They may even need to go into Rogue tier. Anel. Anel is absolutely, my opinion, contender for best deck in format. Uh, we Personally, it seems like in the Midwest here, well, I guess, sorry, not in the Midwest, in the in the U.S., it seems that Anel is actually getting more wins than Sakazuki is. Now, don't get me wrong. These two decks you're going to see interchangeable in the top spot in the winner slot of a lot of tournaments here, but Personally, at least from what I've seen, it feels like Anel is winning more big events than Sakazuki is. Like, Sakazuki is getting in, like, don't get me wrong, it's like the second or third, fourth or whatever. Hell, there was one tournament I saw Eggman review that uh, the top eight was all Sakazuki and Anel. <laughs> That's just crazy. But a lot of people are on Sakazuki because of the hype that it is the best deck in format. But it does have a hard matchup into Anel. Anel just will not will not die. It's yellow. It has access to great triggers. That's why I feel like it is still a contender for best deck in format. And my personal belief is that in some ways it is a better deck than Sakazuki. Um, more more defensive power. It's just really either of these two leaders can take that slot. All right, last three. Red purple law absolutely should be respected. I know, once again, catchphrase. Uh, it can go great into Sakazuki. It has some really cool tech cards. It never needs to have that much Dawn because 
it doesn't need that much dom it free plays things it's it can be pretty scary it has access to red rush it has purple uh ramp it's a solid leader no doubt about that that's the same thing with red purple luffy when red purple luffy like oh my god when it pops off like it's it is one of the most demoralizing things to see a secret rare 10 drop purple luffy played and look at your board and realize that you can't survive another turn with a 6k which could possibly swing in for up at most like 9k and a 12k bot like i've seen one of our locals local players play this get to zero go back to one dawn next turn go to four dawn it's just and then like play something else to go back to five dawn in one turn the deck is insane it's a six cost leader so sorry it's not six cost 6k leader so they are also very dangerous just ramp and play big bodies you throw some nine drop white beards down which is now unlimited uh well limited to back to four and you're, sw you're swinging with an 8k on, on attack and an 8k on defense leader is nuts ah uh, finally red purple kid let's throw him down in locals for fun i'm gonna give him that that he could be a little bit better than in the y category because some people are now just going low to the ground rush builds with him um but yeah he could he could probably go into the y category but i think for now these are what i think the best leaders in the format and like i said these things could change like part of me really wants to put whitebeard up into yonko but he just he, the numbers don't lie he hasn't been performing i don't know if maybe people are just done playing whitebeard or he really just isn't as good as he used to be but personally i think whitebeard is still incredibly scary uh, in the right hands um red purple luffy also is up there i'm just gonna put him just gonna put him right there there we go okay well like i said guys this is my personal take for the best decks in the opo5 meta let me know what you think in the comments down below and once again, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for the recent support. We are on our way to 700 subs. So help a guy out. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Start a conversation in the comments down below. And until the next video, take care. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Here's how the story goes. We find out by the treasure in the grand line. There's no doubt. The pirate whose eye is on it, he'll sing. I'll be king of the pirates. I'm gonna be king. Dago, Dago, Dago. Luffy. That's Monkey D. Luffy. Luffy.